Reminiscences of a Stock Operator Psychology of Trading The beauty of doing business with a crook, is that he always forgives you for catching him, so long as you don't stop doing business with him. Remember this, when you are doing nothing, those speculators who feel they must trade day in and day out, are laying the foundation for your next venture. You will reap benefits from their mistakes. There is nothing like losing all you have in the world, for teaching you what not to do. And when you know what not to do in order not to lose money, you begin to learn what to do in order to win. Did you get that? You begin to learn. You can spot, for instance, where the buying is only a trifle better than the selling. A battle goes on in the stock market and the tape is your telescope. You can depend upon it 7 out of 10 cases. It never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It always was my sitting. Got that? My sitting tight. It is no trick at all to be right on the market. You always find lots of early bulls in bull markets and early bears in bear markets. I've known many men who were right at exactly the right time, and began buying or selling stocks when prices were at the very level which should show the greatest profit. And their experience invariably matched mine, that is, they made no real money out of it. Men who can both be right and sit tight, are uncommon. Another lesson I learned early, is that there is nothing new in Wall Street. There can't be, because speculation is as old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today, has happened before and will happen again. I've never forgotten that. I suppose I really managed to remember when and how it happened. The fact that I remember that way is my way of capitalizing experience. It takes a man a long time to learn all the lessons of all his mistakes. They say there are two sides to everything. But there is only one side to the stock market, and it is not the bull side or the bear side but the right side. It took me longer to get the general principle fixed firmly in my mind. The old story of the man who was going to fight a duel the next day. His second asked him, are you a good shot? Well, said the duelist, I can snap the stem of a wine glass at 20 paces, and he looked modest. That's all very well, said the unimpressed second. But can you snap the stem of the wine glass while the wine glass is pointing a loaded pistol straight at your heart? A stock operator has to fight a lot of expensive enemies within himself. One of the most helpful things that anybody can learn, is to give up trying to catch the last eighth, or the first. These two are the most expensive eighths in the world. Fear and hope remain the same. Therefore the study of the psychology of speculators is as valuable as it ever was. Weapons change, but strategy remains strategy, on the New York Stock Exchange as on the battlefield. I think the clearest summing up of the whole thing was expressed by Thomas F. Woodlock when he declared, the principles of successful stock speculation are based on the supposition that people will continue in the future to make the mistakes that they have made in the past. Speculators buy the trend, investors are in for the long haul, they are a different breed of cats. One reason that people lose money today is that they have lost sight of this distinction, they profess to have the long term in mind and yet cannot resist following where the hot money has led. There is a time for all things, but I didn't know it. And that is precisely what beats so many men in Wall Street who are very far from being in the main sucker class. There is the plain fool, who does the wrong thing at all times everywhere. But there is the Wall Street fool, who thinks he must trade all the time. No man can always have adequate reasons for buying or selling stocks daily or sufficient knowledge to make his play an intelligent play. A man must believe in himself and his judgment, if he expects to make a living at this game. No, sir, nobody can make big money on what someone else tells him to do. The game of speculation is the most uniformly fascinating game in the world. But it is not a game for the stupid, the mentally lazy, 
the person of inferior emotional balance, or the get-rich-quick adventurer. They will die poor. Wall Street professionals know that acting on inside tips will break a man more quickly than famine, pestilence, crop failures, political readjustments or what might be called normal accidents. There is no asphalt boulevard to success in Wall Street or anywhere else. Why additionally block traffic? Of all the speculative blunders there are few greater than trying to average a losing game. Always sell what shows you a loss, and keep what shows you a profit. If the unusual never happened, there would be no difference in people, and then there wouldn't be any fun in life. The game would become merely a matter of addition and subtraction. It would make of us a race of bookkeepers with plotting minds. It's the guessing that develops a man's brain power. Just consider what you have to do to guess right. I've got friends, of course, but my business has always been the same, a one-man affair. That is why I have always played a lone hand. The game taught me the game. And it didn't spare me rod while teaching. If somebody had told me my method would not work, I nevertheless would have tried it out, to make sure for myself, for when I am wrong only one thing convinces me of it, and that is, to lose money. And I am only right when I make money. That is speculating. Don't misunderstand me. I never allowed pleasure to interfere with business. When I lost it was always because I was wrong and not because I was suffering from dissipation or excesses. I think it was a long step forward in my trading education, when I realized at last that when old Mr. Partridge kept on telling other customers, well, you know this is a bull market, he really meant to tell them that the big money was not in the individual fluctuations, but in the main movements that is, not in reading the tape but in sizing up the entire market and its trend. Disregarding the big swing, and trying to jump in and out was fatal to me. Nobody can catch all the fluctuations. In a bull market the game is to buy and hold until you believe the bull market is near its end. Remember that stocks are never too high for you to begin buying, or too low to begin selling. Obviously the thing to do was to be bullish in a bull market and bearish in a bear market. When I am long of stocks it is because my reading of conditions has made me bullish. But you find many people, reputed to be intelligent, who are bullish because they have stocks. I do not allow my possessions, or my prepossessions either, to do any thinking for me. That is why I repeat that I never argue with the tape, 